of all, you have to understand, there is no such thing as a cloud cloud, okay? A cloud is a bunch of data centers that are interacting with each other. So it has to be stored somewhere physically. Now where that physically is, let's think about this. So let's pick on some. Anybody here work for Microsoft? Okay, I'm not gonna get in trouble again. Okay, so here's the deal. Microsoft Office 365 free. How is it free? Well, they reduce the cost of operating. So where's the cheapest place to store data in, in the world? India, Pakistan, other places, not the US. So if you have information on your network, particularly an email, that is US only based, and it's stored in Pakistan and India, you have a problem. But you also don't know it's there because it's not timestamped and marked via ship via India or Pakistan. So again, this is a problem where uh, you get what you pay for, and if you think the cloud is free, I've got a car I want to sell you. It's a 1975 Ford truck. It's in excellent condition. You, you absolutely do not limit or reduce your liability by shifting your data to a cloud provider. There's nothing about that transaction that reduces your liability. And nothing that gives you permission to bury your head in the sand and say, well, we sent it to them. Yeah. You are responsible for that data everywhere. And so you need to explore what that cloud provider is doing to take care of your data because you're responsible. The only way you shift that liability is, is through a contractual provision whereby they agree to take on that liability or through an insurance policy. But the act of putting it into the cloud is not gonna, is not gonna absolve you from, from liability for that data. Think of cloud storage like renting a, a shed from the, the shed company where you're putting something into a shed. If you put something in the shed that's explosive or, or causes a problem, they look at you and go, boy, I hope you have fun paying for everything. It's the same principle in the cloud. Whatever you put in there is your information. They put the shell, the architecture around the shell, but if something happens inside the shell, it's your problem, not theirs. Where cheap may seem to be the way to go, such as let's use Amazon Web Share. Again, to get the price point where it is, that means they're worldwide. You may have PII or PCI information on there, that when it crosses the U.S. border, you've just now entered into a whole new contract negotiation. There are actually companies like Microsoft who refuse to do business in certain overseas locations. So if you send your employees to that location and they're trying to log into their Microsoft account, it won't work because it's been turned off by Microsoft for optimization in those areas of the world. So again, th this is something that really boils down to knowing again what the crown jewels are, how you want to do business, and how you then operate your architecture knowing how you want to run and operate your business, which, of course, has to equate to your price point. If you can't afford the world's most extreme security, you better find out how to reduce your risk, and so it now becomes not a security conversation, but a risk man management situation. And so security risk management is a whole new field that people are looking at and studying into.